Fire Force presents many themes that forge a character's identity, whether it be childhood trauma, being a hero, having unyielding beliefs, being a great leader, and even being a knight, king. But as much as these themes make our characters unique individuals, they also cause them to coalesce under one singular theme, that of delusion and pretending. What's up guys, it's Truth Hero, and today we'll be talking about Princess Hibana, her upcoming fight with Shinra, and why the notion of delusion is so powerful in the Fire Force anime. Also, since I'm pre-recording this, and I honestly don't know how much of the fight scene they'll actually show in the next episode, and since we'll be touching upon the backstory of Princess Hibana, you guys can expect some major manga spoilers ahead. You have been warned. We've already seen a few examples of how delusion or pretending to be something has aided our characters. Arthur is constantly claiming he's a knight and following his inner delusions of chivalry, yet this pretending actually makes Arthur an incredibly powerful fire soldier with his plasma abilities. Like Arthur, the strongest delusions often come from someone who is wanting to pretend they are better off than they actually are, or trick themselves into overcoming fear and trauma, and the show just introduced the strongest delusion of them all in Special Fire Force Company 5's captain, Princess Hibana. Before we discuss how delusion affects Hibana, and how the concept of it actually will decide the victor in this showdown between her and Shinra, let's first explore her character in greater detail. Princess Hibana is a third generation pyrokinetic that has the ability to create flower shaped flames. She manipulates these with her fan, and just a single cherry blossom petal can singe the skin and leave serious cuts. Her fire can even destroy multiple infernal cores. But Hibana's true power is her intelligence that, and her ability to control surrounding temperatures. With her scientific knowledge, she can easily assess any opponent and render their ignition abilities futile by manipulating the heat around them. She can even envelop their body in warmth, leading them to develop heat syncope. This is seen when she subdues Shinra and he experiences vertigo. Messing with your opponent's head? It's the ultimate power for someone dealing in delusion. As for her personality, Hibana is a very narcissistic person, and carries the belief that she is above everyone else in beauty and intelligence, and certainly doesn't hesitate to walk all over others to get what she wants. No, like she literally walks on people. She even treats her own new recruits as gravel that should crunch below her holy feet. I mean, she has a chair made out of rookie fire soldiers. Talk about a delusion of grandeur. But it's ultimately these delusions, instead of using one's imagination to strengthen their situation, that leads Hibana to confront the fact that she's only lying to herself, and in the end is quite powerless. Unlike other characters that use their delusions as motivations to become stronger, such as Shinra seeing himself as a hero which gives him the push to actually physically save others and defend the people, Hibana uses her delusions as her strength and strategy, so when they are thwarted, so too is she. One important thing to note here, after I just finished roasting Hibana, is that she's not alone in this regard. She's not the only character that lets their delusions either make or break their power. Arthur pretends he's a knight and can summon immense power. Yet, if his delusion breaks down, like, say, holding his sword in the wrong hand, his skill in combat is completely useless. Her first and probably greatest delusion is her intelligence. She believes her scientific knowledge awards her supremacy over others, and even sadistically conducts experiments on infernals. One, mind you, that she even stole from Company 8. But the sadistic Hibana really takes pleasure in analyzing her opponents and then rendering them useless with little more than a glance or lifting her fingers. Through this delusion of intelligence, Hibana feels she has become effortlessly powerful. Yet this is where she's sadly mistaken and where the delusions of someone like Shinra, which actually supplement his strength and practice, outshines Hibana's lies that she's told herself. Suffice to say, the fight between Princess Hibana and Shinra is very short-lived. In fact, Hibana fights more with her past than she does Shinra, and it all comes down to the type of delusions they have. Hibana's actual power of heat syncope is itself a delusional tactic, as it makes the victim feel faint and dizzy, but doesn't actually hurt them. Heat syncope is rather harmless, and all we really need to do is drink some water and rest up. Once Shinra realizes the vertigo, throbbing, and shortness of breath are all in his head, well, sort of, and it's all a delusion made by Hibana, he stands up. 
Hey, if being a hero is all in my head, then I can certainly be one in real life. Shinra ultimately wins the Battle of Delusions because his dreams of being a hero, while some could say they are certainly delusional, serve as motivation for him to get stronger and to reach for the goal he is chasing. And unlike Hibana's delusion, don't shield his ego by reassuring him of some superior status. Hibana's delusion, on the other hand, creates a sense of security more protective than a fire blanket. But after it's pulled off, She's a pushover, as she's never had real combat training. In believing she was powerful against newbies, she forgot that power is always being checked and challenged. <laughs> you know, now that I think about it, I wonder how a battle between Princess Hibana and Arthur would actually go down, you know? They both have delusions that fuel and maintain an image of themselves. Princess Hibana with power, and Arthur of course as a knight. It's like, who can pretend the most? Actually. Since Arthur's a knight, he would just have to listen to everything a princess tells him to do. So, yeah, that battle would probably be short-lived. Hibana's second delusion is in her motivations and why she seeks to be superior in power and intelligence. Now, I won't be covering Hibana's cynicism too much here, as I'd actually like to save that for a future video where I talk about Sister Iris and the past that these two characters share. But what you need to know for now is, Hibana is very skeptical about the world and desires revenge for a tragedy that consumed everyone around her. Believing that God has forsaken her, Princess Hibana became stronger and more intelligent in an attempt to enact revenge and burn the people responsible for the tragedy. Her ambition has allowed her to improve her position in the world to avoid horrible circumstances. In fact, given her many experiments on infernals that fall on the sadistic side, she might not even like science for research and helping humanity find the cause of them but rather might just use it as a means to feel she is powerful and can dictate her own fate. Ultimately, she lets go of her delusions and learns that she needs to use her abilities like intelligence in a more productive manner. And while she may still be arrogant in battle, she accepts her general lack of power. Now she uses that cynicism of hers to remain vigilant of religious groups in Hajime Industries, which both may have ulterior motives. And her ambition to uncover the truth behind spontaneous human combustion. Although, despite renewing her trust in others and ridding herself of delusions, she's still got that same domineering personality with her Company 5. So unless you're somehow on her level, bow down and lick it, you piece of gravel. As always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below, who has the best delusion in Fire Force? And are delusions always a bad thing? Let me know what Fire Force content you want to see, keep it tuned to Truth Hero for more, and until next time, may your souls rest easy. La Tome.